Turning our attention now to U.S. credit card debt. It officially hit $1 trillion for the first time on record. That's according to the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. Total balances on credit cards and other revolving accounts reached the $1 trillion mark the week of July 26th. That's up from $998 billion from the previous week, and it's nearly $194 billion more than the start of the year. So who's the most at risk when it comes to payments? At least 8.5% of Americans between 18 and 29 were 90 days behind on payments. This was followed by 6.1% of 30 to, 90, 30 to 39 year olds, while those 40 and up were below 5%. All of this can be extremely daunting, especially if you're part of that number. So to help us get a better understanding and maybe ease some worries, let's bring in a financial expert. David Peters is a certified public accountant and financial advisor. Thanks so much for joining us. One trillion dollars is the wrong is the wrong kind of milestone. So my question to you is, how did we get here? Well, I think that you probably had a few factors at play. Uh, the first one is is that uh, we, as a society, are just doing less with cash, and uh, you know we're doing more with credit card payments. I think that got uh, exacerbated uh, during the pandemic uh, when a lot of uh, places were just simply not taking cash anymore. And so we just got used to using credit cards. But also we've been in a period of heavy inflation for a long time now. And so things are just costing more. Not a surprise to see that uh, credit card balances are up and especially that uh, folks that are younger are having trouble making payments. Yeah. Just today, a Federal Reserve governor said that more rate hikes might be needed to cool inflation. This development leads me to my next question. And this is something you've already touched on. Is there something about our current economic landscape that's really exacerbated this issue? We've talked about inflation. I mean, what else is really contributing to this? Well, I think it's uh, it's mainly just things costing more and people still buying the same things that they've always uh, bought. I think that uh, that is really what's driving it. And I think the big thing that consumers can do is really uh, stop at first uh, to uh, compound the problem. I mean, if uh, we can start paying our current bills using uh, cash and uh, funds that are immediately available, then we can start uh, you know, uh, using any sort of additional money that we have uh, from our paychecks to start paying down the debt that we have. But uh, we need to stop, stop the bleeding first. Yeah. What is it that's keeping people in debt? Um, and I'm asking this thinking, you know, is it major expenditures? Is it emergencies? Is it just bad spending habits as reductive as that may sound? Well, I think it, uh, it depends on the situation and probably uh, who the, the individual situation. I mean, I think that uh, you touched on uh, a lot of the reasons why people could have trouble uh, with debt. I mean, one is, is that if they had a unexpected emergency, something like that, and, uh, you know, especially during a period of heavy inflation where money was tight to begin with, then certainly that could be something that uh, would drive somebody to be in debt and kind of stay in debt. Uh, the other thing is, too, is that, you know, the cost of essentials continues to go up and uh, things like, uh, you know, the um, raising of uh, interest rates, I think, uh, contributes to that. The cost of borrowing money continues to go up. And uh, if uh, you were carrying around a balance on your credit card, Credit card balances uh, are subject to heavy interest rates to begin with. And so in a period of heavy inflation, that becomes even worse. Yeah. Full disclosure, I am well aware of how credit card debt can impact my personal financial health. But what's the larger impact for the nation if collectively we owe so much? I mean, one trillion dollars is a is a massive number and to see that and to see how far how far we've gone just this year alone is is even more striking so what does this mean for a nation of um of consumers if we collectively owe so much 
Well, it means that uh, that we're buried in debt and we're getting to the point where we may not be able to dig our way out real quickly and real easily. And so it's uh, going to take uh, changing habits. It's going to take looking at uh, how we are budgeting, how we are spending our money, and also uh, looking to possibly refinance uh, the debt that we have into lower interest loans with uh, better interest rates. That's the only way that we're going to come out of this is that we need to change our spending habits. Yeah. Let's, um, for the folks watching at home who find themselves in that number, what exactly, what should be done? I mean, if we, if you could give us a list of, you know, top priority, you mentioned stop the bleeding, you mentioned refinancing, yeah. what would be your prescription to this particular issue for anybody who finds themselves you know, with with a lot of credit card debt and not quite knowing how to eliminate that debt. Well, I think that you hit on the, you know probably the first things that we would talk about. First thing is is let's uh, let's stop uh, stop the bleeding. Let's stop paying for things on credit cards. Let's start to look to pay cash for things. But then cut up the credit card. Maybe to you just toss it out. <laughs> That that could be the way, um, you know, I mean, the other thing is, though, too, is looking for ways to maybe refinance that into debt that we are able to handle, be that uh, personal loans, be that, uh, you know, maybe even looking at balance transfers uh, onto other credit cards. Sometimes we can take advantage of promotional rates that uh, will give us a low interest or no interest for a period of time or even uh, you know loans uh, from a retirement account like a 401k those generally are going to have lower interest rates and so that will allow us to at least set ourselves up so that we might be able to get out of this in a reasonable length of time and then we need to be disciplined enough to follow through on that plan uh, that ends slowly but surely we will work our way out but it is going to take time especially when we get uh, to balances that are that large yeah Certified Public Accountant and Financial Advisor, David Peters, we appreciate your insight. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.